Sunday, 2nd of April 2023, a very nice day here in rural Glasgow. Daffodils are up, and the engine's on the table. This is a, this is a full one for my last video, and I'm going to repeat myself. If you're, any, if you're a novice and you're anything like me, I'm going to suggest you find and watch Tin Man Saw's cutaway series of videos on YouTube if you want to understand how a two stroke engine functions and what port times are all about. Especially numbers 1 and 2, and I'll do it sooner rather than later. So I'm going to recap. When I took the top end off, there's a 0.5 no gasket at the head, no gasket in the base, and types of tin man saws, I know that. The exhaust port is fully open when the rim of the piston is at the bottom of the port. I then worked out that I got rid of the 0.5 gasket, it's a 2mm packer, and put a 2mm pack in. I improved the port opening considerably and I also improved the squish. Previously the squish was practically non-existent. So by putting the 2mm packer in, I improved the port opening and the squish. Since then I'm retaking the squish. And with a 2mm packer, the squish is 1.85 on average. According to Sticky's ideal squish is between 1.2 and 1.5. So the options I have now are to bin the 0.5 head gasket, go with a 2mm packer and 1.85 squish, or size down to a, a 1.5mm packer to improve the squish. The, the parameters of the squish measurements are very small, the exhaust port's rather large. I'm going to size it down. So with a 1.5 packer in place, that may not show up, the exhaust port opening is slightly less good, but still acceptable I think. I can look inside and see that the transfer ports are fully open. I have about plus 1.5 if my eye is any good. So I'm going to put the head on now and check the squish. I'm going to recheck the squish. I've got fresh 2mm solder and I've brought the outer solder in slightly. I've gave it quite a light torque. We we'll take it off and see. Quite an indentation here, here, not so much this side. I will measure and see. Squish measurements: one point five six, one point one, one point two five. 1.84 Taking the squish Probably covered this before Can't remember everything It's recommended to take it in three places I believe this is a squish ledge here Not a big area but I presume three places still holds good for it I marked uh, I marked it at the widest point. As it travels round, it starts to dip down. I marked it in another two places. Um, I think it could possibly come in a bit further, but I'll leave it as it is. I've shaped three pieces of 2mm solder to fit. A smear of grease in the inner face. And Bob's your uncle. 
Another way to take squish is to feed some solder in nice and easy through the plug hole till it bottoms out on the cylinder wall. Turn the flywheel a couple of times, don't go mad, and you should have your squish. If I'm just going to use this method, I ink mark the ends. So as I know that what I put it in has come out. When I fully torque the cylinder head down, I will probably try and use this method to recheck my squish. And I've put marks on the outside as a guide for such an instance. I tried this method on my other scooter with the engine in place and the cover on. Not so easy. Further to taking squish, I tried taking it on my other scooter with the engine in place and the cover on. Not so easy. I struggled. This is 2 mil solder. I doubled it up. Eventually got a reading of around 2.06 I think. It's best if the engine's dropped and the cover's off. Word of caution. Don't mess around in mid-air with piston rings. They're liable to break. And I have two new piston rings. The consensus is they must be fitted in pairs. The question now is to hone or not to hone. The consensus on that is that it's more or less mandatory to help the new piston rings bed in. There are a lot of videos on honing on YouTube. The first one I found that explained it in simple language was quick and dirty cylinder honing. That shop teacher guy. The concept behind honing, or the reasoning behind honing, is to create a cross hatch pattern on the cylinder wall and roughen it up a little. The theory being the cross hatch pattern will slow the flow of oil and the roughness will help the piston rings bed in with the cylinder wall. If this is not done, a smooth bore wall, smooth piston rings, a layer of oil between and never the twain shall meet. That's what every burns might say. 45 degrees gets a mention. And 30 degrees gets a mention, so anywhere between the two should be good. Now I'm going to take a chance on this. It's a ball honing tool. It looks easier to use than the tripod type. Uh, Tin Man used it, and for beginners it's recommended. I have two. 62 mil cylinders, so I don't need a big variety of honing tools, I only need one. The problem is, you don't make them for 62 mil cylinders. And that's the number of balls, and that's the size for the cylinder, 68 to 70. And I think 6.5 is the size of the ball. 6.5, the size. 68 to 70. So if my mathematics are correct, 6.5 from 68 is 61.5 for my required ball hoeing. I've cut a complete row out. Prior to cutting the row out, I couldn't get it in the cylinder. With the row out, I can squeeze it, a little bit of lubrication, squeeze it, it goes in. So I'm now going to be able to have a go at doing this. Full size is quite oversized for the cylinder. So I've lubricated both of them with window cleaner. And if I spin it, it's entering. So hopefully that's going to be good enough. Balls are easy to cut out, by the way. I think, I think it's plastic. Just, just snipping and they're gone. I 
was thinking this might be my second Esther Blumenthal moment. But on reflection, I'm going to consider it more my James Tiberius Kirk moment. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Seems you should enter with the drill moving. And bring it out in a smooth motion. The tin man's it up until today. Tin Man is the only one I saw do it in reverse. You would think, you would think bringing it out would be reverse, but my, my simple brain can't work out whether it is or not. So I'm going to do Tin Man style. Is that a dance? Off a little, and you shall see the result. I was doing some preamble for this video, the early stuff, and my intention was to get fully set up for the honing situation. I get carried away and just went for it. And I'm looking at it now, it's difficult to tell. Actually, not looking so bad. I don't think I've got the quite, quite degree that perhaps I need, but I've since looked at another few videos and I'm going to put the drill on to a slower speed and give it another another run through. And it seems it's not a bad idea to deglaze the cylinder in advance, so I've certainly achieved that. Give it another quick run through at a slower speed see how it hands out. The more I look at it, the less bad it looks. All sorts of lubricants get mentioned for this. Glass cleaner, WD-40, ear oil, light spirit even. I used the glass cleaner the first time around, so I'll stick with it. I've had, a look at, I've had another look at it inside. I'm not quite sure about the, the angle or the crosshatch. But I've had a look at another few sides and it seems it's a good idea to take the glaze off first so it looks like I've managed that and I can still have it on a slow speed so I've turned it down, put it on full top and I'm going to give it another go again and see how the cross hatching comes out I'm just sticking with the glass cleaner have it moving when you're coming to the end. I believe it's improving. I'm not sure if I should be going slower or faster. Uh, I'll probably do this a little bit more of an angle. Yeah, I'm going to live with that. I don't think I can afford to carry on doing it anymore. I don't think it's too bad. So I'm going to clean this out. Soapy water. 
toilet brushes, toothbrushes, whatever. And then finish it off with white spirit or some of the other stuff that's recommended. And lint free cloths, rags, towels. But lint free, lint free is important. And then give it a coating spray of WD 40 to prevent any rust setting in before I try to put the engine back together. Finished product, hard to tell how well it shows up. And camera. But there is cross hatching. I haven't seen much better on YouTube. I live with it. Last I checked the Tin Man, he was talking time wheels, port timing and drawdowns. I'm not sure it means anything at the moment. Exhaust port opening and squish are what appear to have relevance at the moment. However, with the engine off and on the table, I thought I might as well have a go at taking the timings and put it in the notebook for future reference. So I didn't have a degree disc. I have a paper timing disc on cardboard. I drew a line, top dead centre to bottom dead centre. I then fixed the flywheel down with the extractor bolt. I used the centre bolt to align the timing wheel. Lined up the line of the arrow on the flywheel. Scribed around the hex head. Cut it out. Pushed it down, still wanted to move a little, put the tape on to make it rigid, keep the line in line with the arrow. So now I'm ready to take my timing degrees. The first thing I noticed was that having used Tin Man's method of finding hot and dead centre, what I had surmised was my top dead centre line was in fact out and out to the left. I will double check that at some point. To find bottom dead centre I've used a method mentioned in Tin Man. Rubber coated, a little bit of leverage and I have bottom dead centre. I hope. I did try Tin Man's alternative version of finding top dead centre by using rubber coated range it takes a little bit of cajoling it does get the piston totally at the bottom but it threw me off a little at the top it actually took a little bit of touchy feeling with the flywheel and a little cajoling and it's now come in on my original top dead centre marks I'm not sure if I could quite recommend this. You maybe need a double check. The next thing was that the timing disc is split into four quarters. Nothing to 90, nothing to 90, nothing to 90, nothing to 90. It means there's four of each number between 0 and 90. And they're all back to front. Very confusing. So. I went online looking for a degree disc, a printable degree disc. I found this one on bricklayer.com, quite a difficult site. And I'm computer illiterate, but I managed to work out how to print out an anti-clockwise degree wheel. Perhaps we'll do a little survey of that site. So now I'm ready to take the degrees, the timing degrees. If you want to take the exhaust port from here, if you look in from the direction of the pencil, see the inner face of the exhaust port, start at top dead centre, wind round, and look for the breaking point. You'll see a glimmer or a sliver of light. 
it's easy to look down and read. If not, you can just put a straight edge on from top dead centre. With the engine in this state of undress, here is how I took the degree timings, starting from top dead centre on each occasion. The exhaust port opens from the top and on the downstroke. Look for the glimmer of light. Fill it open, the combustion gases escape and it closes on the upstroke. Again, look for the glimmer of light. The inlet port opens from the bottom on the upstroke and look for a sliver of darkness. Fully open, fuel and air is sucked in under the piston and it closes on the downstroke. Look for that sliver of darkness. So the transfer ports open from the top and on the downstroke. Look for that sliver of darkness. Fill it open. The compressed fuel and air mix enters the chamber above the piston and they close on the upstroke. Look for that sliver of darkness. Here are my port timings, exhaust inlet transfer. The inlet opens at 280 degrees before top dead centre, passes through 360 and closes at 60 degrees after top dead centre. And I've written it down this way so that if ever I reference this in the future, I will know that I paid attention at the time. The way I see it now is that if the exhaust port opens at 80 degrees, closes at 255, 80 from 255 means I have a drawdown time of 175 degrees and so on and so on. At the moment this is for information purposes only. Exhaust port opening and squish remain the main criteria. So I can fold this page up and stick it in my notebook. Before I do that however Here's my translation of what it all means. Start with the timing. Say 19 degrees before top dead centre. At this juncture, the camshaft and piston are on the upstroke. The inlet port is fully open and a fresh fuel and air mix has been sucked in under the piston. The fuel and air mix in the chamber has been compressed upwards. At 19 degrees before top dead centre, there is a spark. This ignites the compressed mixture, creating an explosion. At top dead centre, the combustion gases from the explosion are expanding and start to drive the piston and camshaft on the downstroke. 60 degrees after top dead centre, the inlet port closes. The fuel and air mix under the piston is now being compressed downwards. At 80 degrees, the exhaust port starts to open. The combustion gases begin their escape. At 103 degrees, the transfer ports start to open. And the compressing fuel and air mix under the piston starts to expand into the chamber. At bottom dead centre, both the exhaust and transfer ports are fully open. The compressed fuel and air mix is now flooding into the chamber and being directed in such a manner as to push the combustion gases out through the exhaust. After bottom dead centre, the camshaft and piston begin on the upstroke. 
I turn to 34 degrees, the transfer ports close. The fuel and air mix in the chamber is now being compressed upwards and pushes any remaining combustion gases out the exhaust. At 255 degrees, the exhaust port closes. The fuel and air mix in the chamber continues to be compressed upwards. At 280 degrees, the inlet port starts to open. A fresh fuel and air mix is now being sucked in under the piston. The fuel and air mix in the chamber continues to be compressed upwards. And at 19 degrees before top dead centre, there is a spark. site I use for the degree discs, blocklayer.com. It does not always come up like this, especially if you're in before, but this is the home page. We'll work from this. If we go to printable templates and hover, a list comes up. I found two items that were useful. Timing degree tape templates. Not diameter. Timing degree tape templates and degree wheel valve timing. I used timing degree tape templates last time. I go in, this is what comes up. This is the imperial version. Metric version. Changes to millimetres. Now, the, the diameter of a timing disc is roughly 155. So if we go to the diameter, delete the 90, Type in 155. The remainder of this box concerns the tape. If you go down to the disc, the diameter is still at 90. Click on anything and 155 gets cemented in. For some reason I found it easier to work with. I brought the range down to closer to 155. Bringing the range down also cements in the diameter at 155. So now we can play about with it a little. Clockwise, anti clockwise. Clockwise, anti clockwise. Inner, outer, inner. Number orientation 0, 90, 90, 180, 180, 270. And back to and back to zero. So I'll go with 270 and say the answer is just the centre. Anything you like. Once you compose your desired disc, if we scroll down, diagrams to PDF. The tape and the disc are separate entities. PDF one, PDF two. Click on PDF2. It's now been sent to my computer, bottom left. What where? Click on that. And it's now in my computer. Click on the printer icon to get a preview. And if I click print, now we'll get a disk. We're going back a few pages. If you go to block layer and the menu icon comes up, if you click on it sometimes you'll get a format like this. I have just been in timing tape. The other item I find of use is degree wheel. And it's the inch version up there. But the millimeter version on the page. And again, the diameter is pasted in 200 this time. Delete 155. And I believe you can 
program these lines to suit yourself, etc. I haven't worked that out, and I'm not going to. I prefer just to get rid of them. And if I click on valve timing here, they disappear. And also the 155 millimeters cements into the disc again. The disc is now shrunk, and I believe I've put a tape across it. It will measure 155. You can now play it about with the disc a little. Top right, outer degrees. Inner degrees. Outer degrees. We go with outer degrees, it's now the timing mail style. Nothing to 90, nothing to 90, nothing to 90, nothing to 90. Nothing to 90. There'll be a reason for this, but I haven't worked it out yet. But I haven't educated myself on it yet. I think the degree marks are just a little zero you get. The other thing you can have is colour, black and white. Colour over the line extends the lines a millimetre past the rim. I would reduce the yeah, I must have to one five four to accommodate this, but it's actually it's actually quite useful as a guide for scissoring. When the disc is formatted, if we scroll down, diagrams to PDF, click. PDF version comes up. Click. Transfer to my computer. Bottom left block layer. Click. It's now in my computer. If I press on the print icon, I get a preview. I have the option in my printer of black and white or colour. I think lipstick red looks good. This video is running on a little. I may have got carried away with irrelevant information. It happens. So I'm just going to put it out there as is. But before I do that, I shall press print and my desired disc shall manifest. <laughs>